Hi there, it's Gabe from All Star Telescope. Today we're going to be going through Celestron's StarSense Explorer series of telescopes. We're going to go through what is it, how does it work, why is it, when is it, who is it. We're going to find that out. The StarSense part of the StarSense Explorer scopes is the phone mount and the app for your phone that lets you attach your phone to the telescope and it uses your phone's camera, your phone's gyroscope and accelerometers where the scope is pointing and after it's aligned you can select a target and have it give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get to the target you want to find. Kind of like Google Maps but for the sky. I like this because it's a middle ground between a fully manual scope and a fully motorized go-to capable scope and it's also in the middle ground price-wise too. Instead of completely surrendering your star hopping abilities to a set of motors you still get to manually point your way around the sky, learn your way around the sky. But if there are some objects that are pretty hard to find, you get a little help along the way. Your phone will give you arrows, and as you get closer to the object in real life, your phone will show that you're getting closer to it too. And when it's centered on your phone screen, it'll be centered in your eyepiece when you look through it. If all that sounds good to you, then great. There are a few different scopes for you to choose from that have this feature. Within the StarSense Explorer family, there are two different lines of scopes. There are LT and DX scopes. The LT scopes are smaller and more economical, whereas the DX scopes have a larger aperture and are a bit higher performance. Within the LT line, there are two scopes to choose from, a 70mm refractor and a 114mm reflector telescope. Refractor telescopes are usually more compact, and you don't need to worry about alignment and collimation. But the downside is, because different colors bend at different rates when passing through glass, you can sometimes see around really bright stars a little color fringing. This doesn't affect the views that you'll see or how faint you can see, but some people can find it distracting. The downside to a reflector telescope is even though you get more aperture for your money, you do need to worry about collimation, which is the alignment and orthogonality of the mirrors in the optical system. I would say between the two value-oriented scopes, if you prefer convenience the most, then get the 70 millimeter refractor. Whereas if you're willing to put in a little bit more work and alignment at the start, then go with the 114 millimeter reflector. When it comes to telescopes, aperture is king, as they say, and the larger your aperture, the more light you can collect, which means the more you can magnify or the fainter you can see. With the DX line of scopes, there are two corresponding telescopes that are like bigger brothers to the two scopes in the LT line. There is a 102mm refractor and a 130mm reflector telescope. They operate in the same way, but they're slightly larger and they collect more light. With that larger aperture, you'll get to see fainter things and you'll get better views overall of the night sky. So it's a worthwhile upgrade in my opinion. Within the DX line, there is also a 5-inch Schmidt-Cassegrain telescope with the same StarSense technology. Uh, this is a very large scope in comparison to the other ones and gives you a very high magnification. It's definitely the nicest of the five scopes mentioned so far. And finally, if you've still got aperture fever and you want the most scope for your money, you can get a Dobsonian-style telescope in 8, 10, or 12-inch models uh, that have the StarSense Explorer phone mounts mounted to them. A Dobsonian is a Newtonian telescope at its heart with a large floor-mounted alt as up down left right mounting system to help you maneuver it but because it's a newtonian telescope you are looking at it from the side and that paired with its very large cumbersome nature means that it's pretty disorienting trying to star hop and figure out what's up and what's down so that's why i found it quite helpful to have my phone to guide me through and show me exactly how i need to move the scope well with so many scopes to choose from i hope this guide helped you figure out which one might be the best fit for you we've learned the what We've learned the why, we've learned the how, the when, now I think is the best time to pick the right scope. Overall, these are a great middle ground telescope where they offer you the convenience and the features of a go-to style telescope, but without having to pay for the motors and without requiring power or batteries other than the one in your phone. Thanks very much for watching. We've got links in the description to our website for each of the telescopes that we've talked about today. Uh, or check out our channel if you want to see other guides and tutorials. We'll see you next time.